Hey folks, good afternoon. Welcome to Four Flight Fundamentals. This is going to be an introductory course in using Four Flight Mobile on the iPad. My name is Ryan McBride. I lead the product design team at Four Flight. So basically my team is responsible for making sure all of the features within Four Flight are easy to use, easy to understand. I learned to fly at the University of North Dakota and I learned to build software at Michigan State University. And I've been doing both of those things for about 10 years now. We have a variety of forums uh, all throughout the week. The full schedule for the forums that we have is on our website, forflight.com EAA. We also have a little printed uh, schedule available in our booth in Hangar C. Also, for attending today, you're eligible for FAA WINGS credit. If you'd like to receive WINGS credit for attending today, simply go to this website address on the screen, enter your name and the name of the presentation that you attended. You can also stop by our booth in Hangar C and fill out a card and we'll credit your WINGS account that way. At the end of the presentation, I'm going to leave this URL up so that you can take a picture at the end if you didn't be in the beginning. So today we're gonna to walk through a couple things. We're gonna start talking about the iPad. If you are interested in purchasing your first iPad or upgrading your existing iPad, a lot of different screen sizes, storage capacities, and capabilities across the iPad product line. We have a few short recommendations we normally make, and I'm gonna walk you through that. Then we're gonna dive into the application. We're gonna walk through all of the core areas of Four Flight Mobile, one by one. I'm gonna show you all of the features within each of the areas of the app, how to plan a flight, get a briefing, check weather, that sort of thing. Also, at the end of the presentation, I'm gonna give you some information on learning more about Four Flight, how to contact our support team, how to watch our video courses, that sort of thing. And then at the end, we're gonna have about 15 or 20 minutes for questions and answers. So if anyone has any questions that come up during the presentation, please just remember your question, and at the end, we'll have plenty of time to go through all of the questions and answers. So before I dive into uh, the application itself, I wanna talk briefly about what's new in the latest version of Four Flight. There's always something new in Four Flight. This year has been no exception. Uh, in 2019, we've already had 10 releases, believe it or not, uh, seven of those major releases with new functionality. A few of the new things we've recently announced are uh, something we call Alternate Advisor. So instead of having to think about the right alternate for your IFR flight plan, Fort Flight can actually automatically suggest alternates based on runway length and procedures available, that sort of thing. That's a brand new feature available in the app. We've also recently announced takeoff and landing performance. So ForeFlight can calculate your takeoff distances, V speeds, landing distances, that sort of thing, all directly in the application. We've also been working on improving uh, the way that we can visualize information in the application. And we've started announcing some new 3D features. What we're looking at here is what's called a 3D airport preview. It allows you to preview any airport in the world in 3D. We take the worldwide Jeppesen obstacle and terrain database that's built into every ForeFlight application. And on top of that, we overlay satellite aerial image photography. You can tap on the buttons in the top right corner to align yourself on a one mile final on glide slope for each runway. So you can see what that final approach is going to look like if you were to land there. We've taken the 3D preview functionality and we've applied it to flight planning as well. When you have a route planned in Four Flight Mobile, you'll see a new button in the bottom right hand corner, 3D. If you tap on that, Four Flight will actually allow you to visualize the entire route that you've planned, all the waypoints, the altitudes, that sort of thing, in 3D. There's a nice little timeline along the bottom of the screen with all of your waypoints. You can tap on it to expand it to get more information. You can scrub forward and backward in time to review different areas. And if you tap on the screen, you can actually move the camera around and see the things you're going to be flying over. Another new feature we recently introduced is something we call breadcrumbs. This was a common uh, feature request from a lot of our customers. We were excited to get this into the app. It's very simple. It's just a real-time depiction of your flight path as you're flying with the application. We've also enhanced our documents view to make it a little bit easier to use. And we've brought that documents view to the iPhone. We've been gradually enhancing the iPhone version of Four Flight with more and more features that are available on iPad. And the documents view is just the latest example of that. Another new feature that's brand new and is one of my favorites is map annotations. So in ForeFlight, you've always been able to draw with a stylus or your finger on a, an approach procedure or on a document. You can now actually draw directly on the map itself, um, right on the map view. 
If you have an Apple Pencil, you can actually take your Apple Pencil and just start drawing on the screen right away. You don't have to actually tap on the Pencil button to enable annotations because the Apple Pencil can communicate with Forflight and Forflight can tell the difference between your finger and a stylus, which is really cool. We also recently introduced a brand new application. It's a free application. It's called Forflight Passenger. And it's meant to answer a very common question that almost every pilot has heard multiple times, which is, are we there yet? The Forflight Passenger app is available on the App Store. It runs on all iPads and iPhones. Any of the passengers that you have on board can download it. And as soon as they get in the airplane and open the app, and you open up Forflight on your iPad or your iPhone, Forflight will send across the GPS position and the currently active route on the flight plan view to your passengers. If you get vectors in flight or you maybe go direct to a waypoint and you change your route, that propagates and broadcasts to your passengers as well. It's all instantaneous. You don't even have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. All that's required is that both devices have Wi-Fi on and they can see each other and talk behind the scenes wirelessly. It's totally free. It's available at forflight.com slash passenger. We've also announced a brand new ADSB device. Uh, last year we introduced our Sentry. Sentry provides dual band ADSB weather, traffic, AHARS, WASP GPS, pressure altitude sensor, carbon monoxide sensor, a built-in 12-hour lithium ion battery. This year we're introducing a brand new product that fits what we believe is a gap in our existing product line. Sentry provides ADSB weather and traffic and GPS in a very small form factor for a really great price, $299. Sentry Mini is available at our booth in Hangar C, or you can purchase it online at flywithsentry.com. We've also added the ability to visualize your track logs using a profile. So if you have flown a flight with ForeFlight, it has recorded the flight for you, and you can play it back in the track log view. We've added this new profile section to it, so you can visualize your GPS altitude and ground speed. If you have connected an AHARS unit, like the Sentry, and that was connected when you were flying, you'll see your pitch and bank graphed out in this graph as well. And of course, if I tap on that 3D button in the right-hand side of the screen, I can actually visualize the flight that I flew in 3D as well. So that's what's new in ForeFlight. We have a variety of presentations throughout the rest of the week uh, on specifically all of these things I just talked about and a whole lot more. Um, the next one is going to be Saturday at 11.30 a.m. right here in this pavilion. And again, the latest version of ForeFlight is 11.6. It's available now, and you can check it out, get a hands-on demo at our booth in Hangar C. So let's talk about ForeFlight. But just by a show of hands, who here flies with ForeFlight today? Awesome, pretty much everyone. Uh, ForeFlight's been around for a little while now. The company was actually founded in 2007 by Tyson Weiss, the current CEO, and Jason Miller, the current CTO. Tyson and Jason are both pilots. They had uh, backgrounds in software. And they actually met online through some aviation discussion forums. 2007 was an important year. It was the year that the iPhone was first introduced by Apple. And Jason and Tyson got to thinking about the potential this device had to improve the lives of pilots. And so they came out with the first version of ForeFlight. It was very simple. You would enter an airport code, and ForeFlight would spit out the METAR for that airport. And the application has come a long way since then. We pride ourselves on building what we believe are the most elegant, high-performing apps in aviation. We also pride ourselves on something we call the Fanatical Pilot Support Team. It's a requirement to be a pilot to work on the ForeFlight support team. That's because we want our customers to have the absolute best customer support in the business. Um, the Pilot Support Team is available all the time over email. If you prefer phone support, you can send them an email with your phone number, a time to call, and they'll give you a ring. I'm going to give you some information at the end of the presentation on how best to contact them. We're proud to say we've been the number one selling aviation app since 2010. So let's talk about the iPad. The iPad comes in a variety of different models and screen sizes. If you're looking to get a new iPad or upgrade your existing iPad, choose whatever screen size you're most comfortable with. For example, I fly a 172 and a Robinson R44, and I like the iPad mini. Um, because it's the right form factor for those aircraft. If you have a little more room, you want the maps to be a little bit bigger, maybe upgrade to the iPad Air or the iPad Pro. ForeFlight works exactly the same on every screen size. For each iPad, though, it comes in two different versions, Wi-Fi only or Wi-Fi plus cellular. We generally recommend customers get the Wi-Fi plus cellular model. 
And the reason is that is the only model that Apple makes with a GPS that is built in. When they manufacture the iPad, they put the cellular receiver and the GPS receiver on the same chip. And so you can only get GPS in the cellular model. You don't have to sign up for cellular data service with Verizon or AT&T in order to use it, but you do need that model to see a GPS position. And then of course there's a variety of different storage sizes. Uh, if uh, you are getting a new iPad, I believe the new minimum size capacity is actually 32, and that's the minimum size we recommend. You could download everything we offer, and it will fit just fine on the 32 gigabyte size. If you have other apps, you take a lot of photos or videos, you might want to upgrade to 64 or 128. But 32 gigabytes is the minimum we recommend. If you have more questions on what iPad is best for you, you can talk to us in Hangar C. Go to our website. We have a whole page called our buying guide, which walks you through all the different iPad models and what we recommend. Uh, or just shoot us an email, team at fourflight.com, and we can answer any questions. All right, let's talk about the app, Fourflight Mobile. We like to think about Fourflight Mobile as an integrated flight app, meaning we've designed and built it so that it's the only tool a pilot needs to plan their flight, fly their flight, log it, and review it afterwards. Fourflight Mobile has a wide variety of airport information, maps, plates, and documents, weather imagery, the ability to file and brief IFR and VFR flight plans right in the application, a tool we call Scratchpad, which lets you take notes on your iPad screen, and a whole lot more. We're going to walk through all of this over the next 60 minutes. If you haven't downloaded Fourflight yet, you need to go to the App Store on your iPad, and in the App Store, you need to search for Fourflight and you can tap the download button and it will be downloaded to your device. When you open up ForeFlight for the first time, you'll see a view that looks like this. This is the airport view. It's the default view for new installations of ForeFlight. Along the bottom of the screen are a series of buttons. We call these buttons tabs, and collectively we refer to it as the tab bar. The tabs are really great because they allow you to switch between different things you want in flight with just one tab. They're like little bookmarks to different areas of the application. Today we're going to work left to right across each of these tabs, one at a time. And we're going to start on the left, and the leftmost tab is the airports view. So again, when you open the airports view, it looks like this. Up at the top of the screen, there is a search box. And you can tap in that search box and you can enter an airport code that you're interested in looking at airport information for. If you don't know the code, you can type the name of the airport or the city that the airport is in, and ForeFlight will recommend some suggestions based on what you've typed. So enter the airport and ForeFlight will refresh the view with the information for it. Um, there are two sections to this view. There's a top section which has summary information about the airport, such as its name, uh, a quick reference thumbnail diagram of the taxi diagram, its city, state, country, sunrise and sunset times. You'll also see the flight category. Based on the current METAR, ForeFlight will tell you if it's currently VFR, marginal IFR, or low IFR. I can see the pattern altitude and field elevation, any fuel or procedures that are available, and then common frequencies. At the bottom of the screen are a series of tabs that run across the middle, and this allows you to dive deeper into information for each airport. So for example, if I was to tap on the frequencies tab and scroll down a little bit, I would see all of the frequencies, all the types of frequencies in the left-hand column, and if I tap on a category, I would see all the frequencies that belong to that on the right-hand column. So if I wanted to look up ground frequencies for Oshkosh, I would tap on ground, and I would see all the frequencies in the right column. Each of these tabs is organized in the same two-column layout. So for example, the next tab over is weather. If I wanted to look at weather for Oshkosh, I would tap on the weather tab. And in the left column, I have all the different types of weather products that are available. Right now, we're looking at the METAR, and I can see that it's, when this screenshot was taken, Oshkosh was reporting VFR conditions. We can see a green little VFR bubble in the top, uh, I can see that the raw text of the METAR is colored in green as well. And beneath that, I have a translation of all the different codes in the METAR. In the top right corner of the METAR, it says 38 minutes ago. That was when that METAR report was last issued. Underneath the translation, I have the conditions at nearby stations, so I can see what the surface conditions are like nearby this airport as well. The next weather product is the terminal forecast. If the airport you're looking at doesn't have a TAF, we'll just show you the nearest one. When you tap on the terminal forecast, you'll see all of the time blocks in the raw tab color-coded based on what conditions are forecast to be in effect at that time. 
So in this case, it was VFR out into the future. If it was marginal at any point, I would see a blue line there. Or if it was IFR, I would see a red line. Or low IFR, I would see a magenta line. And then for each of the forecast time periods, we translate each of them as well. Um, there's a couple other weather products uh, that are available. We're not going to go in depth into each of those weather products today, um, but just as a quick reference, the next one, MOS or MOS, that stands for Model Output Statistics. And it's a forecast, very similar to the terminal forecast, except it's completely automated. So when the forecaster writes the TAF, we're looking at a variety of different weather products, and they are issuing the TAF by hand. The MOS is 100% generated by computers. We've included it, though, because it has a couple of unique benefits over a terminal forecast. The MOS is available at far more airports, uh, 2,200 and, and more airports across the United States. It also goes farther out into the future than the TAF does. So if there's not a terminal forecast near you, check out the MOS. There's probably one nearby. Also, the forecast discussion. Whenever the forecaster issues their forecast, they are uh, required to write in plain English why they are issuing the forecast as they are. So I like to think of the forecast discussion as almost the blog post by the forecaster. It's a great thing to read. It allows them to, uh, to qualify their forecast and it'll provide a little more detail on uh, their, their uncertainty about the forecast. And then winds aloft are available from the surface to 60,000 feet above any airport. The next tab over is runways. This is all the stuff you'd expect to find in the chart supplement book, the airport facility directory uh, section. Um, we've just laid it out in a little bit easier to browse interface. I can tap on the runway I'm interested in. I can see uh, its surface type, its dimensions, uh, lighting information. At the top, you'll see the wind component section. Based on the latest METAR, we will tell you what the headwind, tailwind, or crosswind components currently are for any of those runways. The next tab over is procedures. This is how I can open up any sort of plate for a, a airport, whether that's a taxi diagram, an IFR approach, that sort of thing. I can tap on the category of procedure I'm interested in, and on the right-hand column, I see all the procedures in that category. So if I wanted to open up the taxi diagram, I would tap on airport diagram, and it would open up, and it would look like this. Uh, it might be hard to see in the back, but there is actually a blue border around a portion of this procedure. Whenever you see a blue border around a portion of the procedure, that means that's the portion that is geo-referenced. So as long as you have a GPS position, that's the portion of the procedure that you will see your aircraft position inside. And in this case, I can see my aircraft here taxiing on the runway. We get some questions about this one here, the four-flight diagram. What, what is that? Why, why would I want to use it? Well, the FAA makes taxi diagrams for lots of airports, but they don't make them for every airport. They do it on demand um, based, on, uh, based on pilot feedback. There are many, many airports across the United States that do not have FAA taxi diagrams. And at Fort Flight, we're all GA pilots. We fly all over the place. And um, we thought it would be really cool if more airports could have geo-reference taxi diagrams. So we built a team. It's called a GIS team. And they actually go out and they look at geographic information and surveying information about the airport. And they generate taxi diagrams for all the airports that the FAA hasn't gotten to yet. So if there's no FAA taxi diagram for your home airport, check and see if there's a four flight one. There probably is. When you open it up, it looks very similar to any other taxi diagram. It's geo-referenced, but I can also see that it's the four flight version because there is a logo at the bottom of the screen. Let's talk about approaches as well. If I wanted to fly an approach into this airport, I would tap on the procedures tab. I would select the approach category, and then I would tap the approach that I am interested in. So let's say I was going to fly the RNAV to 3.6. I'll open that up, and here it is. You'll notice not the entire procedure is geo-referenced. There's a blue box around only a portion of the procedure, the plan portion of the procedure. That's because that's the area that's drawn to scale and therefore is geo-referenced. This area down here, the profile portion of the procedure, is not drawn to scale, and it is therefore not geo-referenced. The next tab over is NOTAMs. Any NOTAMs that apply to the airport are included here. You can browse by airport NOTAMs, obstacles, TFRs, center NOTAMs. If you're a Jeppesen customer, you'll see Jeppesen NOTAMs here as well. For each NOTAM, we give it a little icon to indicate the type of NOTAM it is. We highlight the important information about it. And we also pull out the effective times and the expiration times, just to make it a little bit easier to read. 
Next over is the services tab. If you're ever flying into an airport you're unfamiliar with, you want to see what uh, restaurants are nearby, car rental services, hotels, that sort of thing, you can browse all of those businesses in this view. If you tap on one of the businesses on your iPhone or on a cellular iPad, it'll actually call the business for you from ForeFlight. And finally, the airport facility directory. If you prefer to just look at the raw source of all of this information, that's always included. That's under the AFD tab. There's one last thing I want to talk about on the airport's view before we move on. That's this FBOs button in the top right. If you tap on that, you'll see all of the businesses on the field at the airport. So that means things like FBOs, uh, maintenance facilities, aircraft rental or flying clubs. If I tap on one of these, I can see more information on them. If they offer fuel, what the latest fuel prices are, their frequency, their phone number, their email, that sort of thing. I can also tap on the comments section and I can see what other ForeFlight customers have said about this business and I can leave my own comments as well. So let's move on now. We're going to go to the Maps tab. The Maps tab is one to the right of airports along the bottom of the screen. The Maps tab is where the majority of ForeFlight customers are going to spend their time. Everything in the ForeFlight map is visualized on the same representation, this 3D globe. This 3D globe is actually uh, made internally at ForeFlight with computer code. We call it the ForeFlight Map Engine. And we've designed it to be really easy to use and specifically to be used by pilots. You can see here I have a GPS signal, so I see my airplane position pulsing on the map. If I take two fingers, I can uh, actually interact with the map. So for example, I could take one finger and I could pan around to move to a different area of the map, or I could take two fingers and I can spread them out on the screen. We call that pinch to zoom, and that allows me to get into better detail about any given area. Up in the top left-hand corner of the screen is an important menu. It looks like a stack of paper. We call this the layer selector menu. This is how we tell ForeFlight about the type of map we want to look at, and also the type of map layers we want to look at. For example, if I was to open this menu, I would see two columns. The left column is maps, so VFR charts, IFR charts, that sort of thing. And the right column is layers. Layers are pieces of information we can visualize on top of whatever map we've selected. So if I was going on a VFR flight, I might turn on the VFR sectional. And when I do that, my four flight map is now transformed into the VFR sectional. But I interact with it the same way. I can pinch and zoom to move around different areas. If I zoom out to a large area of the country, you can see we've stitched together all of the VFR sectionals into one continuous map. We do that for every chart type. If you're zooming into an area that has a terminal chart, a tack chart, as you zoom in, that tack chart will come forward automatically. It'll pop into view by its own. If I was on an IFR flight, I might choose an IFR low chart or an IFR high chart. But the way you interact with the map layers is, or the map charts is, is the same. There's a couple different types uh, of maps in here that aren't specific to aviation, but that we've included because we think you might find them useful. This is one example. This is the street map. It's uh, a pretty standard street map, has all the roads, neighborhoods, that sort of thing. There's also the aerial map. The aerial map is a satellite photography layer. It's a satellite photography layer and it covers the entire world. So you can zoom in and see high resolution satellite photography for any point. There is one more type of map I want to talk about before we move on, and that is the aeronautical map. That's the top option at the top left corner of the screen. This is a special map because unlike the VFR sectionals or the IFR charts, which are basically just scanned versions of the paper chart, the aeronautical map is not a scanned chart. It is actually dynamically generated on the device itself. ForeFlight has an aeronautical database built into it. And the, the application looks at this aeronautical database and it starts drawing the map on the fly on the device. There are a lot of really unique benefits to visualizing maps in this way. For example, a dynamic map, like the aeronautical map, is intelligent. When I'm zoomed out, it shows me big picture information, center boundaries, class B airports. But as I zoom in, more information comes into view. 
nav aids, airspace, waypoints, even the taxi diagrams are built right in if you just keep zooming. We've even included the location of all of the FBOs on every taxi diagram, all in one map, so you don't have to go anywhere else to find it. Of course, you can customize the way that this map looks because it's dynamic, it's modifiable, the way it looks, the way it works. And you can change the aeronautical map under the settings menu. If I open that up, I'm going to see some options. I can switch between different themes, so a dark theme or a light theme. I can switch between high and low airways. All airways will replace on the map. I can even drag the text slider big or small to make all the labels much larger or much smaller, depending on what I want. This aeronautical map solves a very common problem that I think a lot of pilots have when they fly with any EFB, which is, let's say they're looking at a traditional VFR or IFR chart. They're flying south, but they're tracking nose up. What happens? The chart's upside down, right? You can't read anything. Well, because this, app, this map is dynamic and it knows where you're flying and what direction you're headed, it's automatically going to rotate everything so it's right side up, no matter which direction you're flying. So that's the left column of this menu, lots and lots of different types of maps. The right column is map layers, things we can visualize on top of the map we've selected. So a common example is radar. I can select the radar layer, and I see radar on the screen. Obviously, the color of the radar indicates the intensity of the reflectivity, but sometimes you'll see other things on radar. For example, this black line here, we call that storm tracks. That's showing you the direction and the trend of that cell. The leftmost dot here, that's where that cell is right now. One dot to the right is where it's going to be in 20 minutes, the next dot 40 minutes, the last dot one hour from now. But another way to visualize how storms are moving is just by animating them. Anytime there is an animatable layer in ForeFlight, you'll see a timeline at the bottom of the screen. And I can tap on the play button on that timeline, and it'll start animating the radar for me. There's lots of different useful map layers in the application. This is the enhanced satellite layer. It's a combination of visible and infrared satellite. So it allows you to see both cloud coverage as well as interpolate the height of those clouds based on the color. AirMets, SIGMets, and Center Weather Advisories are also available. You can tap on that. You'll see all of them plotted on the map. There's a filter at the bottom of the screen with this layer, so you can turn on and off different types of AirMets and SIGMets based on whatever you're interested in. And you can always tap on a AirMet or SIGMet to see information about it. I can see what type it is, if it's active or not, what the altitudes are, and the raw text of the product. TFRs are built in. Also, I can tap on the TFR option, and I will see TFRs on the map. Anything that's yellow is an upcoming TFR, so it's not currently active, but it will be soon. Anything in red is currently active. I can tap on any TFR to see information about it. There's a special type of TFRs that pilots need to be aware of, and those are stadium TFRs. Unfortunately, the FAA does not publish a TFR every time there's a major event at any given stadium, but there is essentially a TFR in place over it regardless. Well, as pilots ourselves, we thought that was a little frustrating, and so we've actually built some things behind the scenes to solve this problem. On its own, ForeFlight goes out and it looks at all of the stadiums across the country. It looks at all of the event schedules for each of those stadiums and the stadium's capacities. And if there is an effective stadium TFR over that stadium at any given time, you will see TFRs plotted in ForeFlight for you. You can tap on it and see information about it. In this case, the Pirates were playing the Cubs at Wrigley Field. Flight category. Flight category is going to take all of the METARs and put them on the map for you. And you can tap on one of them to see information about it. Anywhere you see a, a green circle, that's, that's a VFR METAR. Blue is marginal, red is IFR, magenta is low IFR. This is a worldwide product. You can see whether anywhere in the world with any subscription. Another one that I really like is the winds aloft layer. This allows you to see the forecast wind speed, direction, and temperature at any altitude for any point on the entire planet. When you turn on the winds aloft layer, you'll get wind barbs on the map. If I zoom out a little bit, I can see wind currents. 
They're color-coded based on their intensity relative to historic trends. And I can use the altitude slider in the bottom right corner to move up and down in altitudes and see what the winds are doing at any altitude. As I zoom into any given area, I can tap on one of those wind bars and see when the forecast is valid and what the specific information is. Of course, we'll put pilot reports on the map as well. Anywhere you see a blue icon, that's an icing report. Orange is going to be turbulence, and gray is going to be some other type of observation. And you can tap on a pilot report to see when it was reported and what the report was. There's a few more types of layers that are available in our uh, higher tier subscription, the Pro Plus subscription. One of them is the icing forecast. The icing forecast has two models, a US model or a global model if you're flying internationally. And it allows you to see the forecast intensity of icing at any altitude all the way out into the future. So when I open up the uh, icing forecast, I can see where that icing intensity is going to move over time. And I can see icing at any altitude using the altitude slider at the bottom right. I can do the exact same thing for turbulence. So if I open up the turbulence forecast, which also has a US only and then also a global model, I can visualize where turbulence is going to be moving at any altitude all the way out into the future. Finally, the surface analysis. This is a surface chart. It's going to show you frontal boundaries and general frontal movement. When you open the surface analysis, you'll see where the fronts are now and where they're forecast to be moving out into the future. OK, so those are some of the charts and layers that are available in the app. Let's talk about flight planning. That's a big part of using ForeFlight, is being able to plan and file your flights in the application. We plan flights using the flight plan view. That's the FPL button at the top of the screen. If I open up the FPL view, I get a little drop down. We call this the flight plan drawer. And it has a, a bunch of buttons in it. You'll see in the center of the screen it says, tap here to create a route. So let's do that. I'll tap in the center of the screen. And from the bottom, ForeFlight presents me a keyboard. We enter routes in ForeFlight just like we would type words in a sentence. A word, then the space bar, then a word, then the space bar. We can do the same thing with waypoints. So for example, if I was planning a route from Oshkosh, I would type K-O-S-H for Oshkosh, and then I would hit the space bar on my keyboard. Two things happen. First, at the top of the screen, we can see that the K-O-S-H, it's been filled in with a blue bubble. We call this a route bubble. This is ForeFlight telling you, hey, I know what that is. That's a real thing. You didn't mistype it. It's a real airport. You got it. And also on the map, I can see K-O-S-H has been plotted for me. If that bubble was bright red, that's ForeFlight telling you, you, this isn't a real thing. I don't know what this is. Maybe check the spelling. Let's go down to my hometown of Chicago, Illinois. We'll fly down to Schaumburg. That's 06 Charlie. And then I'll tap the space bar, and I get a route bubble, and I get my first leg on the screen. Now let's go over to Michigan. So how about Grand Rapids? That's GRR, so I'll type KGRR, and then the space bar, and I get my second leg. Now let's say I was flying a little Cessna 162, and I wasn't too keen on crossing Lake Michigan on that day, and I decided to be safer and just go around the lake. Well, if I knew an airport or a waypoint south of the lake that I wanted to fly over, I could enter that in the flight plan tour. But there's another way of modifying and creating routes. It's by interacting directly with the map itself. We call it touch planning. And basically the idea is you can use your finger directly on the map to change your route. As an example, let's say I wanted to fly south of the lake. What I would do would be I would take my finger and I would place it on that second leg that I wanted to change, and I get a little target that pops up. And I can drag that target down to where I want to stop. And when I lift my finger up, I get a menu. And this is ForeFlight saying, OK, here's all the stuff nearby where you, you lifted your finger up. In this case, I wanted the airport. I wanted Plymouth Municipal. So I'll go to the airports, and I'll select Plymouth. And it inserts the waypoint for me. It's also inserted Plymouth for me up at the top of the screen in the flight plan drawer as well. You can also interact directly with those route bubbles up at the top. For example, I could tap on a route bubble, and I could move it where I want it. And I lift my finger up, and you can see my route changes down below. So anything I do up top is mirrored on the map and vice versa. If I do just a quick tap on one of these route bubbles, I'll see information about that waypoint or about that airport. 
The information that's provided here will vary based on what that thing is. In this case, it's an airport, so I could pull up the airport diagram or show a procedure for it. At the bottom left section of the flight plan drawer is a readout of the total distance for the flight, my estimated time in route, my estimated time of arrival in destination local time, the total amount of fuel I'm going to burn for that plan, and the average headwind or tailwind uh, averaged across the entire route. But in order to get good numbers out of foreflight, we have to put good numbers into foreflight. We have to tell the app a little bit about the aircraft we're flying and how it performs. And in order to do that, we use these three buttons to the left of the route. The first one is the aircraft button. This is how we tell foreflight what it is that we're flying. If I tap on that button, I'll get a list of all of the aircraft that I've planned a flight with in the past. If I haven't planned a flight before, or I haven't entered any aircraft before, this menu will be empty. I can select the aircraft if I had already had one in the list, or if I want to create a new aircraft for the first time, I can tap the plus button at the top of the screen. Let's create a new aircraft. When I tap that plus button, I get a form, and the more information I fill out, the better the calculations are going to be. So the more you can fill out, the better. That being said, at a minimum, we require you to fill in the tail number of the aircraft, that's the first yellow field, and the aircraft type code, that's the second yellow field. Once you've entered the aircraft type code and its tail number, we will look up behind the scenes in the background the registration information for that aircraft, and we will pre-fill a lot of the rest of the form for you to save you time. In fact, for flight, when you first set up a new brand new aircraft, we're going to look at the equipment database, see what sort of equipment is registered with that aircraft, and we're going to fill out all of your ICAO filing codes for you automatically, and those will be sent to the flight plan once you file it. Directly underneath the aircraft button is the performance button. So we've told ForeFlight about what we're flying, but we haven't told the app how fast we're going to fly or how much fuel we anticipate we're going to burn per hour. We need to do that so that we can get good numbers. I'll tap on the button and I'll get a list. And this list includes individual performance profiles. You can think of a performance profile as just a set of data that tells the application how that aircraft flies. There are basically three types of performance profiles. The types of profiles that are available to you depend on the subscription level you have. All customers have access to the basic performance profile. It's really simple. It allows you to define an airspeed, a fuel burn rate, and a climber descent rate for your climb, cruise, and descent phases of flight. To create a performance profile for this aircraft, once you've opened up that performance menu, you can tap the Add Performance Profile button at the bottom, and you'll get this form. And this allows you to enter climb, cruise, and descent information. You can create multiple profiles. For example, you could have your, uh, your economy profile, your, your long-range endurance profile, your get-there-fast profile, that sort of thing. If you are a ForeFlight Performance Plus customer, these profiles for your aircraft are already built into the application. We've sourced the performance information for many, many different types of aircraft, and you won't have to create your own. They're already built in. At the bottom of the screen, the last button there along the left, it has an altitude in it. It says 9,000. That's what I'm currently planning at. This is what's called the Altitude Advisor. If you open this up, ForeFlight's going to show you what the headwind or tailwind is going to be if you were to fly this route at any given altitude. And based on the performance profile you entered, how much time it's going to take to fly at that altitude and how much fuel you're going to burn. So you can filter by VFR or IFR altitudes, westerly or easterly headings, or you can just type uh, an exact altitude into the top right corner. I want to point out that we've been in this flight plan drawer, which we accessed with the flight plan button in the top left. We've been on the edit section. When we're flying, it's often useful to look at the nav log section. This is going to show you per leg information as you're flying. It's going to update as you fly with time information, distance information, and it will transition you across your legs as you fly automatically. So that's about 10% of what you can do on the maps view in ForeFlight. 
Uh, to find out more about how powerful this is, you can check out our uh, booth in Hangar C. We'd be happy to give you a hands-on demo. We're going to move on to the next view in the, in the application. That's called Plates. If I go to the Plates view, that's the third tab uh, along the bottom of the screen, I'll see something that looks like this. The Plates view allows us to organize all of the procedures we want, taxi diagrams, approaches, that sort of thing, into what we call binders, which are just folders. And you can add as many procedures you want into as many binders as you want and set things up just how you want them. At the top of the screen is a drop down. And I can tap on this drop down and it allows me to look at all the binders I have, all the binders I've created. So let's say that I was uh, planning way ahead and I was really excited for the next air show I was going to go to, which was going to be Sun and Fun next year down in Florida. So I was going to create a new binder to start organizing the plates that I might need for that long trip. I would tap on the plus button in the binders drop down to create a new binder. And ForeFlight will ask me what I want to call it. So I'll call it Sun and Fun, and I'll tap the Save button. And you can see now I have a new binder in my dropdown, Sun and Fun, and it's checked. That means that's the one we're looking at right now. Here's what it looks like. It's brand new, so there's nothing in it. So let's add some procedures to it. I'll tap the Add Plate button, the big button on the screen, and I'll get a menu. We're often thinking about ways we can help save you time when you're planning your flight, when you're using the app gen generally. You'll notice here that ForeFlight is suggesting some airports. It's suggesting airports that it thinks we might want to pull a plate for to add to our binder. You can see Oshkosh, Schaumburg, Plymouth, Grand Rapids. It knows we were just planning a flight on the maps view, and so it's suggesting that we might want to pull a plate from one of those airports. So I can tap on one of those airports to pull a plate for it, or if I don't see the airport that I want, I can just search for it. So I'll type LEL for Lakeland, Florida, and I see all of the procedures for that airport, and I can tap on the one that I want, and then we'll add it to the binder. And I can add as many procedures as I want, rearrange them, that sort of thing. If I tap on a plate, it'll open it up in full screen. And when I'm flying this approach, as long as I'm a Pro Plus customer, and I have a geo-reference procedure and a GPS source, I will see my aircraft on the approach plate. At the top of the screen is a red button. It says tap to view two NOTAMs. It's obviously super important to get all available NOTAMs for our flight. It's important as pilots that we do that. To sort of improve that a little bit um, and to remind pilots about NOTAMs, ForeFlight in the background scans all the NOTAMs in the NOTAM system. And whenever you're viewing a procedure that has any NOTAMs that are relevant to it, you'll see this button. And if you tap on that, you'll see any of the NOTAMs that are applicable to this specific procedure. This pencil button allows us to annotate. We can tap the pencil button and we can make notes and those notes will be saved on the procedure. There's a button in the top right corner. It looks like a box with a little arrow coming out of it. You'll see that button in a lot of different places in ForeFlight. We call it the Send To menu. Whenever you see that button, it means this thing you're looking at right here, you can take this and you can put it somewhere else. You can send it somewhere or visualize it in a different way. In this case, if I tapped on that Send To menu when looking at a procedure, I have an option to send the procedure to the map. This is one of the most powerful features of geo-reference procedures. If I send it to the map, it's actually going to take that procedure and put it on the map. I can see my airplane transition on top of that procedure as I fly it. I can tap on the procedure and adjust the opacity a little bit to see through it a little easier. That's a feature that's available in the Pro Plus subscription. OK, moving right along, let's talk about documents. The documents tab is in the middle of the screen, one to the right of plates. This is what it looks like. In the left-hand section of the documents view, we have a, a catalog. This is all of the different places that we can look at documents in. At the top are my binders. So I can create binders and fill them with documents, just like I did in the plates view. Underneath the binders section are what we call drives. Drives are sources of published documents. So for example, the FAA publishes a ton of different stuff, handbooks and uh, notices to airmen and chart supplement information. And you can download that all on FAA.gov, but it's all available in ForeFlight as well. 
Similarly, anything that's published by Jeppesen or Nav Canada or Eurocontrol, even for flight, we publish our own documentation. You can access it all here under the drive section. If I tap on one of these drives, I can see all of the documents that are available. I can tap on the download button next to one of the documents and it will be downloaded to my device. And I know it's downloaded because I get a preview of what it looks like and I get a green checkbox in the top right corner of that document. That tells me it's now downloaded and you have access to it. It's also worth noting that the documents view supports folders and subfolders. So when you're browsing a drive, for example, the FAA drive, you'll notice that there's some folders in here. All the chart supplements are contained within one folder. If I open up that folder, I can see each individual document and download just the one I want, or I can tap the download button at the top of the folder to download everything. There's also a way to change how documents are laid out. There's a little button that looks like three rows, like in a, in a table. I can tap on that and I get uh, all of these different rows here. It's all the same information, it's just organized uh, in a slightly easier to view way. I can switch back to that grid view by tapping the button again. This four flight category is all the documentation for four flight mobile. There's a special document, it's called the Pilot's Guide, that's basically the manual for the app. There's one chapter for every feature that's built in, so you can download it here and have it with you when you fly. Also, whenever there is a big air show going on, you can find the NOTAM here. So this is the 2019 Oshkosh NOTAM in the Four Flight Drive. I can tap the download button and have that with me. When I tap on a document, it opens it up in full screen. I can annotate it like I do with the plates with the pencil button. I can add it to a binder. So if I was planning a trip to Oshkosh and I wanted to organize all the stuff that I wanted for that trip into one binder, I would tap the Add to Binder button. I can search through it for keywords or chapters. I can bookmark pages for quick access. I can also send this document. I can email it or print it. At the bottom of the screen are all the pages in the document. So I can swipe left and right to get to the page that I want. Next up is weather imagery. The imagery section is here in the middle of the screen. This is all of the weather imagery you'd expect to find on aviationweather.gov, plus a bunch more stuff we think you're gonna find useful. It's all organized by types of weather along the left-hand side. You can type on the type of weather, tap on the type of weather you want and then tap on the specific weather image you want. It'll open it up in full screen. If there are multiple forecast periods for a specific weather type, I can move backwards and forwards in time with the two arrows at the bottom of the screen. That lets me move backwards and forwards. Okay, let's talk about filing flight plans and generating weather briefings. You can file VFR and IFR flight plans right through the application and get weather briefings as well. We do this under the Flights tab. That's one to the right of imagery along the bottom of the screen. If I tap on that Flights tab, I'll see a view that looks like this. Along the left-hand side are all of the flights that I've planned in the past. The blue flight is the one that I'm currently looking at. I can create a new flight by tapping on the plus button and I get a new flight form and I can fill it in. All this information, it's, it's very similar to the, the information we provided on the maps view when we were planning a flight on the maps. For example, I have a readout of distance and time and fuel. I can enter my departure and my destination and my ETD, my aircraft and its performance profile. I can also enter my route. But there's a few things that are not available on the maps view. The first is this option, nav log. This is a planning nav log. Really detailed, highly accurate nav log for planning purposes. It doesn't update in flight, but it's nice to have with you. And it, we've automatically inserted top of climb and top of descent into this nav log. You can see how your aircraft will perform at different altitudes above and below the one you're planning to fly at. And it's saved on your device so you can view it in flight. We also have the briefing. You can tap on the briefing button and you'll get a weather briefing. This is the same weather information you'd expect to get from 1-800-WEATHER-BRIEF, but we've just redesigned it in a way that's easier to use via your tapping with your finger on an iPad. There's many sections here. You can walk through each of the sections. Whenever you see an orange dot next to a section, that just tells you, hey, you haven't read this section yet. There's something here you might want to look at. Once you've uh, generated a nav log and you have 
uh, planned your flight out and you're ready to go fly, you're going to want to file the flight plan. So you just tap the blue button, proceed to file, and ForeFlight gives you an ICAO flight plan form. We pre-fill it all. You can modify any of this information at this point if you wish, and then once you're happy with it, tap the file button and it goes off to the air traffic control system. It's really smart to file with ForeFlight. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, when you create a new aircraft in the system, we will automatically set up all of your ICAO filing codes. You can always modify those filing codes uh, if you make a change to your aircraft, or you just want to tweak something, um, but really handy, saves you a lot of time. We can also send you what are called adverse condition alerts. Once you've filed your flight plan, if anything pops up, maybe a TFR pops up, or there's an airmet or a SIGMET that's issued between the time you filed and the time you're expected to depart, ForeFlight will send you a push notification. Hey, here's a heads up, this thing has popped up. You can tap on it, see what it is, when it's effective. We can also send you what's called your expected route. When you file an IFR flight plan in ForeFlight, ForeFlight sends that flight plan to the air traffic control system. ATC uses a computer system called ERAM. ERAM receives all the flight plans, and if it's an IFR flight plan, one of two things happens. Either it's going to be cleared as filed, or it's going to be cleared with some changes. You're going to get an amended route when you call up clearance. Well, when ForeFlight files the flight for you, it actually doesn't just drop it off and run away. We actually keep listening. We monitor the status of your flight plan in the ERAM system. And if uh, ATC is going to clear you as filed, we'll let you know. If ATC is going to clear you but with an amended route, we'll send the route back to you via email and push notification to your device. And with one tap, you can load it into your map view so that when you call up clearance delivery, you already have your expected route on your device. Similarly, if there is a delay program in effect, um, many airports are notorious for this. Uh, Teterboro, for example, has, often has ground delay programs. We will notify you that there is a new expected departure clearance time if you're on an IFR flight plan that is expecting to be delayed. I want to point out that we planned a flight here on the maps view, right? And then I showed you on the flights tab where you get a briefing and a nav log and file. You can plan there as well. You don't have to plan the same flight twice. Let's say I planned a route here on the map and then I was ready to get a briefing or ready to file that flight plan. Well, here's that trusty friend again, the send to menu. Remember, anywhere you see that, that means you can take this thing and you can send it somewhere else. And so if I tap on that send to menu, I can send it to the flights view. And when I do that, it'll take me over to the flights view, it'll create the new flight for me, it will pre-fill all the information for my flight, and then with one tap, I can tap proceed to file and file the flight plan. I can do the reverse as well. If I planned a flight here in the flights view, I could tap the send to button, it's all the way in the top right corner, and I can send it back to the map and go fly. So as pilots, we know that uh, taking notes, jotting down information is a big part of flying. And we're trying to reduce paper. We want you to be able to not have to bring paper and pen with you when you fly. And so we built a feature called Scratchpad, and it allows you to take notes with your finger, with a stylus, or even with your keyboard when you're flying. It's the second to last tab along the bottom right hand corner. If you tap on scratch pads, you'll get a view that looks like this. You can create multiple scratch pads for different types of notes. If I tap on the new scratch pad button, I get a series of templates. For example, the draw option is just a blank screen that allows me to draw and make notes with my finger or with a stylus. One of my favorite templates is this, the middle bottom one there, the ATIS. This is a very simple form that allows me to quickly jot down all the information in the ATIS as I'm arriving at an airport. Okay, I know we've covered a lot of stuff today. Um, if there is one thing in particular that I would like you to come away with, it is this next one, downloads. When we go fly with the application, it's important we have all of our charts downloaded so that we don't uh, have to change our, our plan when we're flying. In order to make sure that you have everything downloaded when you're flying with ForeFlight, we use the Downloads view. That's under the More tab, under the Downloads section. And you see at the top here it says Download Settings, and I have a bunch of countries. The countries you see and the options here that you have will vary depending on whatever subscription you're on. Basically how it works is you tap the country you want. So let's say I was flying in the United States, so I'll tap on United States. 
And there's two sections. The first section at the top, that's where I tell ForeFlight the types of charts I'm interested in. So if I'm a VFR only pilot, maybe I'll turn on VFR sectionals, uh, VFR charts, and taxi diagrams. If I'm flying hard IFR day in, day out, maybe I'll turn on IFR high and low, terminal procedures, that sort of thing. So we tell ForeFlight about the types of charts we want, and then below that, the areas we want it for. And you can check off as many different states as you want. If you're flying in another area of the world, for example, in Canada, let's use, um, this organization is different. In Canada, it's organized by province. Different areas of the world are organized differently. But in the US, it's organized by state. So I've, typed, I've tapped on the types of charts I want and the states that I want it for. And then I'll go back to the downloads view and I'll tap the big blue download button. Whenever this button is blue, that means there's stuff that you've selected that you don't have. And you can, or at least that you don't have the latest version of. So you can tap that blue button, it'll download everything, and then when it's done, it'll turn gray, it'll be disabled to let you know you've got everything you need. Now also, on the maps view, there is a feature called pack. There's a little suitcase down in the bottom right in the flight plan drawer. It has a little red badge on it. When you see a red badge on the suitcase, that's, that's for flight telling you, hey, you haven't packed everything you need for this flight. ForeFlight analyzes the route, and if you tap on the pack button, you can see anything within this 25 nautical mile corridor, any charts, any weather, notums and fuel prices that are inside that intersect with that corridor of the, the flight you planned, ForeFlight's going to prompt you to download. And you can tap the pack button and download everything you need just for that flight. So there's a whole lot more in ForeFlight Mobile. Uh, just very quickly, some of the cooler things I think that are in the app. Synthetic vision, it's a 3D view of what's outside the window, terrain, obstacles. It's gonna show you traffic, if you have ADS-B traffic. It's fully interactive. Weight and balance is built in, so you can actually set up a weight and balance profile and move people and cargo between stations and see your CG change and move within the envelope. It'll notify you if you're out of CG limits. There's a logbook built in. You can log your flights, track your currency. Because you're flying with ForeFlight, the app can actually log your flights for you automatically. Daytime, nighttime, takeoffs, landings, different airports you went to. Checklists are built in, so you can create checklists or use one of the common templates that are available in the app and run through checklists in the app on the iPad or on the iPhone. The latest version of ForeFlight will actually, can actually speak your checklist to you via the iPad speaker or a Bluetooth headset. Glide Advisor is a really cool feature. This is going to show you your available gliding distance. If you were to have an engine failure at your current GPS altitude, this is the range you would be able to glide. It changes and morphs based on the current winds aloft forecast, your GPS altitude, and any terrain or obstacles that are nearby. The Procedure Advisor is really handy to visualize uh, uh, instrument departures, arrivals, approaches, and even traffic pattern entries into and out of any airport. ForeFlight can alert you based on different things. One of my favorite types of alerts is the hazard alert. ForeFlight tracks your aircraft's 3D position and its trajectory. And if you're on a uh, potential collision course with any terrain or obstacles, will alert you, automatically orient your track up, and highlight the, uh, the issue right on the map. Also, a lot of these features that I've been talking about, the planning and the filing and the weather, it's available on your home computer. You can go to foreflight.com and log in and plan your flights with a keyboard and mouse on your computer if you prefer. What's really cool about that is all of the, fl the flights that you plan on your computer sync automatically to your iPad and your iPhone. So you can plan at home, sync to your iPad, go out to your airplane, and if you have avionics in your airplane from one of our many partners, such as Garmin, da uh, Dynon, Avidyne, uh, Aspen, you can actually wirelessly transfer your flight plan from your iPad to your panel. I've included one up here, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, if you have a flight simulator on your home computer, like Microsoft or X-Plane, if you connect your iPad to your Wi-Fi network at home, ForeFlight will actually think it's flying along with you in the simulator. It's pretty, pretty instantaneous. It just communicates to the computer over Wi-Fi, so it's a great way to practice. 
Lots of ways to learn more about the app. Check out that pilot's guide. Remember, that's in the documents section in the ForeFlight Drive. That's the manual. You can download it, have it with you when you fly. Also, check out our videos. That's foreflight.com slash videos. Every time we make a new feature, we make a little video about it, what it is, how it works, how you use it. Also, all of our courses, including this one, are recorded, and they're going to be on our website. You can get the latest info on CoreFlight at blog.foreflight.com. That's our blog. It has all the latest info about the stuff we've been working on. Remember our pilot support team. They're all pilots. They're all ForeFlight experts, and they're available all the time. You can send them an email, team at foreflight.com. And that concludes today's fundamentals presentation. Thank you so much for coming. I, I hope it was useful for everyone. So we have about 15 minutes if anyone has any questions. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the question is Apple Pencil. Can I use that to annotate in ForeFlight? In the, the scratch pad? Yep, the Apple Pencil works uh, in any annotation view within ForeFlight. Other questions? Yes, sir. When I got uh, filed my IFR flight plan to come here, I got a note back that said I didn't use the right uh, ICAO form. Can you just go in and manually change that? Sure. So the question is I filed with ForeFlight and I got a notification that. Um, there was something that wasn't quite correct with my IKO equipment codes. Uh, we will do the best to pre-fill those codes for you, but it's important that you double-check them. You can always change them and modify them. I'll show you where to do that. When you are in ForeFlight Mobile, uh, if you go to the More tab, it's the bottom right-hand corner, and you go to the Aircraft section, these are all the aircraft that I have added. Under each aircraft at the bottom of the screen is a filing section. This is all the filing information, all the filing codes. And I can go into any single one of these ICAO filing sections and choose the correct code. If you're not sure what code to use based on the equipment you have in your aircraft, the first thing I'd recommend would be to look at our ICAO filing guide. That is under the documents category and the four flight section filing with ForeFlight Mobile. This has a walkthrough of all the different ICAO codes and what they mean. You can also send us an email or stop by the booth in Hangar C and we can walk you through setting it up. Other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. So the question is, when you're looking at radar in ForeFlight Mobile, so let me put some radar on here. When you're looking at radar, sometimes you will see some numbers on that radar. See this little number here, 331? That number is an echo top. That is the highest altitude in that cell that reflectivity was received by the next red station. It is not the cloud top. The clouds might be higher than that, but it is the highest altitude of precipitation. On that note, you'll notice there are two types of radar in ForeFlight. There is composite radar, and just underneath that there is lowest tilt radar. These are two different types of radar. In order to, use, uh, in order to understand how, what these two types are, you have to know how the NEXRAD system works. Ra the composite version is going to show you the worst level of reflectivity against in that area that you're looking at. So for example, um, the next red station goes out, it sends a beam out, it scans the sky at different angles of elevation. Whatever angle returned the worst level of reflectivity, that's what you'll see when you have composite on. Lowest tilt is only going to show you the reflectivity that was returned at the lowest beam that was sent out. Which means lowest tilt is a great way to see the type of precipitation that's actually hitting the surface. There can be plenty of precip that's evaporating before it doesn't come down. So lowest tilt is a good way to see what the surface precipitation is like. Yes, sir, all the way in the back. Yeah, so the question is, um, I've downloaded some FAA documentation, the FAA handbooks, and the question is, do those, will those be updated? And the answer is yes. When the FAA updates those handbooks, um, we will update them in ForeFlight Mobile. In order to make sure you have the latest documents, you just go to the More tab under the Downloads section, and uh, at the bottom of this list is a Documents category, and you can tap on that and make sure you have the latest version of those documents. Yes, sir, in the blue. 
Can you file SIDS and STARS with transitions? Um, that's a good question. I believe it depends on the ATC, cent the ATC center you're filing within and also the procedure itself. I think it varies the acceptance of the ATC system when you're filing. For the specific types that are allowed, you're allowed to file, you can stop by our booth and hangar seat or send us an email. I don't have a full list with me. Yes, sir. Are there any note TAMs that aren't uh, covered by four play? Can that be a single source of all note TAM information? So the question is, are there any note TAMs that are not covered by four play? Either the briefing or the charts. Sure. So when you're looking at NOTAMs in four flight on the airports view or on the briefing section, that's coming directly out of the FAA NOTAM system. So whatever they've most recently published in the NOTAM system is what you're going to see there. When you're looking at a NOTAM on a plate, and you're looking at a plate here, let me pull one up. I don't know if this one's going to have one on it, but normally you'll see, there it is, tap to view one NOTAM. This one is, uh, we're doing some algorithmic work to parse all those NOTAMs and put them here on the plate. It's more of a reminder. It's important to always review the full list of NOTAMs under the airport or in the briefing itself. But whatever the FAA has published is going to be in four play. Yeah. Yes, sir. Is there a user manual that you can out, print out for copy? Yeah, sure. The pilot's guide that I mentioned is the user manual. It's in the app. Or you can go to fourflight.com and download it from there and print it out. Other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, the uh, blog information is, let me open that back up. No, oh, it's not on here. It's blog.forflight.com is the URL. And what are the hours for uh, audio or uh, someone Yeah, so we're available seven days a week. Just send us an email. Um, if you would prefer phone support, just send us your phone number and a good time to call. And the specific area, uh, hours vary based on uh, based on day. I don't have the full list with me. They're absolutely available between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Um, Central Time, um, and those air hours were sh will shift a little bit earlier and later based on how much support we have. But 9 to 5 for sure. Blog.forflight.com. Yep. A checklist from another four flight user? Yes. Yeah, so if you have a checklist from uh, that someone else has created in four flight you, uh, and you want to use that checklist, there is a way to export it and then import that checklist into your account. Um, I can't step through it here, but if you stop by our booth, we can show you how to do it uh, or send us an email and we can walk you through that. Yeah. I know your arrival and departure proceeds are not to scale. Some are. Does it still show a plane position on them at all? No, so the question is. Um, SIDS and STARS. When you are looking at arrival and departure procedures, some of them are not uh, geo-referenced. Uh, let me switch back to my iPad here so you can see this. So here's an example. This is an FAA departure. It is not geo-referenced. I wish we could. The FAA doesn't draw them to scale. You won't see your aircraft position on top of it. However, if you are a Jefferson customer and you are looking at a SID or STAR, so let me pull up an example of that. You're looking at a, uh, let's go to an airport that has some. Oh, here is a good example. Uh, do I have, I actually don't have JEP charts on here. I was going to show you um, the JEP charts and SIDS and STARS, they are drawn to scale now. And so they are geo referenced. That's one benefit of JEP charts. Okay. Yep. How do you, uh, Sure, yeah, when you're looking at the airport's view here, um, you can see there is a, a side panel, uh, and the side panel has favorite airports, so these are airports that you have saved. You can favorite an airport by tapping the star button, and that'll add it to the list, so it's a like bookmarking. Also, recent airports, this will show you a list of all the airports you have viewed recently, and then browse. You can browse by uh, country, and then by state, and then by city as well. Or you can just search by name or by code for the airport you're looking for. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. So, so my question is, is that I got this long list of airports. How do I take them out? 
can't take them out. So they are sorted by city here. There is no way to sort airports alphabetically. Um, they're, they're alphabetical by city right here, um, but there's no other way to sort them. If there's, a bunch, if there's a bunch of airports you fly to normally, I'd recommend just favoriting them and adding them to the list. Um, you can sort them manually like this, so you can manually sort them alphabetically if you wanted. Just tap the edit button and you're able to add and remove and re reorder them that way. The edit button is this guy, the blue one, top in the corner. Sorry? Alphabetical? Yeah, you can get rid of them. You just swipe on them and, and, and delete them like that. But under the browse section, you, 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 this is the directory, so you can't remove them because this is what's published. But the favorites, yeah, that's your own pub, that's your own private list of airports, whatever you want. Yep. Anything else? Yes, sir. Yeah, sure. There's three subscription levels in ForeFlight. If you're curious what features are in each, you can check out ForeFlight.com. That has all of this information on it. And we also have brochures in our booth and hangar seat for each of the subscriptions. Yeah. Pre-flight weather planning. How do I get to cloud top information? Is that available? Sure. So cloud tops in ForeFlight are available in three places. If you are connected to ADSP in flight, there is a cloud tops layer that is available. If you have an XM weather receiver, I believe CloudTops is over that as well. If you're on the ground and have an internet connection, the only way to see CloudTops right now would be by using that enhanced satellite layer based on the color, that's the temperature of the cloud, and by that you can interpolate the top. And there's a legend for what those colors mean in the pilot's guide. Yes, sir. Yeah, totally. The question is, let's say I have my own documents, maybe some PDFs or something that I want to store. Can I, can I bring my own? The answer is yes. I'll show you what I have. Under my documents section here, I have some stuff uh, from my R44, like the POH and stuff like that. And I have imported these all. I just downloaded them from the Robinson website and I put them in the app. There's a couple ways to do it. Um, you can email the documents to yourself, open the email on your iPad, tap on the document and select open in for flight and it'll load it in. You can airdrop it from another Mac or another iPad to your iPad, or uh, you can actually link a Dropbox. So if you have a Dropbox account, you can create a folder, subfolders, organize all your documents the way you want, and if you log into your account on forflight.com, there's an option to sign in with Dropbox, and from then on, the two are linked. So when you go into the Documents section, you'll actually see a Dropbox drive that has all of your stuff in it. And there's a guide on how to do that on our website, or again, we can walk you through it here in Hangar C. Yeah. Yes, sir. On weather display, the, the weather lines to track the dots, how far, what time are those dots said the dots represent a time? Yeah, each of the dots, when we were looking at radar, and we're looking at some storm cells. Well, just one question. Yeah, when you're looking at some storm cells, not all uh, radar storm cells will have storm tracks on them. Some of them do. Here's one that's an example. Each of these dots is, represents 20 minutes of movement. So from the first to the second dot, that's gonna be 20 minutes. So this is uh, moving there in 20 minutes. The next dots are gonna be another 20 minutes and the last 20 minutes. So that's one hour of total time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in the briefing, when you're looking at the briefing uh, in the flights view and you pull in a weather briefing, I don't know if I have one downloaded right now. Yeah, I don't have a connection to generate a briefing right now. We are adding a variety of different weather imagery to briefing. Cloud tops might be a weather imagery option to briefing. I think it's got the Glasgow area for the Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that, that, I believe that is an option. You're right. Anything else? All right, we're going to be in Hangar C all week. Thank you so much.